We're still talking about ordered samples. Um, last video, we talked about ordered samples with replacement. So if you haven't watched that one yet, go ahead and go back to that. Um, next, we're going to talk about ordered samples without replacement. So the idea is we're going to take ordered samples of R elements from a set omega with N elements where the elements may not be replaced or repeated. So the idea is once we've taken an element and put it in our sample, we're not going to take it again. Uh, you can think of that as either it does not get repeated in the sample. You can think about it as if we were drawing uh, tiles from a bag, we wouldn't put the tile back in the bag. We wouldn't put the card back in the deck. We don't put the marble back in the urn. So that's why we say that they're not replaced. Uh, we're going to start by counting a special case of such samples. Um, instead of only taking our elements from the set, I'm going to take the entire set. I'm going to put the entire set in order, and that is called a permutation of the set. A permutation of a set is an ordered sample of the entire set without replacement. And the idea is, right, if you're ordering something, you're not going to put the same element in twice, right? If I'm lining up my students and putting them in some kind of order, a student can't be both in the second and 14th slot. It doesn't work that way. Uh, so a permutation is an ordered sample without replacement of the entire set. So once again, we're going to just kind of do an example, count how many there are, and see if that gives us an idea of what the formula is supposed to be. So I'm going to enumerate to count the permutations of the set A, B, C, D. Uh, by now you should know we're not going to just come at the slapdash. We're going to have some sort of system. I usually start with the A's. So let's start with the A's. Here I'll have uh, my row where I start with the A's. I'm going to have my row where I start with the B's. I'm going to have my row where I start with the C's. And I'm going to have my row where I start with the D's. Uh, so the natural first ordering is just A, B, C, D, right? put my elements in the obvious order. Uh, maybe I also keep B in the second position and now I flip the D and the C, there's another one. Uh, that's it for B, right? Once I start with A and then have B in second place, all I've got is I can flip the C and the D, right? So that's it. So once I've chosen my second element, there's only two options for the order of the remaining two elements. Uh, so let's get A, C this time, and then B, D is going to be a valid permutation, uh, as is A, C, D, B. Once again, once I've chosen my second element, the only two choices for the last two. Uh, and then I can have A, D, B, C, and A, D, C, B. Kind of running off room there. Uh, so let's stop and think for a second, right? Once I've chosen my first element, I've got three choices for the second one, B, C, and D. And then once I've chosen my uh, third element, my second element in three ways, there's only two ways to put those last two in there. So that's gonna be relevant in a minute. Uh, let's do the Bs, I can do B, A. Kind of using what I learned last time is there's only gonna be two of those. Figure out my pen stuff here. This is awful. Let me just erase this. How about that? Okay. Let's try that again. B, C. There we go. B, C. B, D. B, D. Uh, C, A. C, A. C, B. C, B. C, D, C, D, D, A, D, A, D, B, D, B, D, C, D, C. And so that's me picking my first two elements. That's this all the ways I can pick two uh, elements. And then I'm done counting now, right? I could, but I'm going to, for completeness sake, actually finish these permutations. Um, so B, A, C, D, B, A, D, C, B, C, A, D, B, C, D, A, B, C, A, B, D, A, C is what I should be saying here. I almost got a little ahead of myself. B, D, C, A, uh, C, A, B, D, C, A, D, B, C, B, A, D, C, B, D, A, C, D, A, B, C, D, B, 
A. Uh, D A B C, D A C B, D B C A, D B A C, D C B A, and D C A B. I really regret this example. I wish I hadn't done this. Uh, I do, I do, because it's important, right, to kind of do an example first where we enumerate everything and we kind of start to see the pattern, right? We see that we have four options. I've done this a million times now. I feel like doing this little table. One, two, three, four. There were four options for my first choice. And then after making my first choice, I had one, two, let's get a different color in here. I had one, two, three options for my second choice. And then once I've made my second choice, I have two options for my third choice. All right. So, and then of course, just one choice for my final selection. Um, so that's four times three times two times one. And of course this is equal to 24. Tell that just by counting. But I don't really care about that. What I care about is that this is also equal to four factorial. If you don't remember what factorial is, don't worry. We'll review it in just a second here. Um, but there's our idea, right? If we want to order four elements, there's four factorial ways to do so. And that gives us the formula. There are n factorial permutations of an n element set. Uh, and in case you don't remember the factorial function, uh, let n be a natural number. So we have to be careful here. Uh, in the sans serif font, this kind of capital bold n, that's the set of natural numbers. Uh, so we call this number n factorial, and it's defined recursively by the relation that n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial. So to make a factorial, you multiply the preceding factorial by the current index. Uh, and we also make the definition that 0 factorial is 1. Uh, why do we do that? Well, how many ways to order the empty set? It's just one. Just don't do it. It's called the empty permutation. Uh, so that's why we define zero factorial to be one. It's also pretty helpful in uh, calculus two as well. Um, so that's the definition of the factorial function. We're going to use that recursive definition a lot. Um, you can take that recursive definition and you may inductively prove this closed form expression that uh, n factorial is equal to the product of all the integers between one and n, uh, which is another way to define n factorial. Uh, so let's do this. How many ways can the set u, w, x, y, z be ordered? Uh, I have no interest in enumerating this out, so let's just use some counting principles here. Um, I've got to make a selection of five elements, and I can't repeat them. I'm putting them in order, right? So I have five options for my first element, okay? And then after I've chosen my first element, I have to choose the remaining five elements. Well, I'm sorry, the remaining four elements. Well, how many ways are there to order four elements? We just did this. It's four factorial, right? So I pick my first element. There's five choices for that. And then once I've done that, I've got to order the other four of them. Well, there's four factorial ways to do that. And so this uh, is the recursive definition for five factorial. That's where that recursive definition comes from. I can also think of it like this. I've got to choose five uh, for my first element. I can choose four for my second because I'm not allowed to order something twice. I've got three options for my third element. I've got two options for my fourth element. And then I've just got one option left for my last element. Uh, and that is also 5 factorial. Um, and it turns out uh, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 factorial. 4 factorial, remember, is 24. And 5 times 24 is 120. So there's 120 ways to put the set in order. Now you see why we didn't want to list all those out. Okay, so we know how to order every element of a set. But what if we just want to order some of the elements? 
That is called an R permutation of a set. Um, and sometimes it's called a partial permutation to keep the distinction between a partial permutation and a full permutation. A uh, partial permutation of a set is an ordered sample of R of its elements. Uh, I guess I should say without repetition, right? It should be here as well, without repetition. It's kind of clear from the use of the word permutation. When you see the word permutation, that's uh, no repetition, but it's good to say it. Okay, let's enumerate them. So we're going to count the number of ordered samples of size 2 without replacement from the set ABCD again. Uh, and as always, I'm going to start with my A's, then do my B's, then do my C's, and then do my D's. Um, but notice this time I can't do the element AA because I'm not allowed to replace. I don't have any replacement. So I'm going to start with AB, AC, and AD. BA, can't do BB, so I'm going to jump to BC and BD, CA, CB, CD, not CC, oops, DA, DB, and DC. Uh, it's clear, right, that we had four options for our first. I should never say the word, it's clear but we can enumerate to find that we had four options for our first element. But then, because we took an element out, we only have three options for the second element. So that's four times three gives us 12. And it's worthwhile to think, remember we had 24 permutations. Let's write that down, 24 permutations. Okay, we had 24 permutations. Now we only have 12. How do we get from 24 to 12? Well, obviously, I shouldn't say obvious either, but I think we all know that if we take 24 and divide it by 2, we get 12. Well, what is 2? Let's get a different pin in here. Well, no, maybe not. Let's look at the permutations A, B, C, D. and the permutation A, B, D, C. Both of these are permutations of the entire set, but because I'm only interested in the ordering of two of the elements, they both map on to the two permutation A, B. So for every one of my two permutations, I've got two full permutations. So notice that if I take my total number of permutations, which is 24, and divide by the number of ways to order the unused elements, I get the number of two permutations. All right, so let r be an integer less than or equal to the integer n. Uh, there are n factorial over n minus r factorial permutations of an n element set. So n factorial in that last example uh, was four factorial. That was the number of ways to order the stuff that we, the entire set. And then we didn't care about two of those elements. So we divided that by two factorial. Uh, so that gave us 24 divided by two, which was 12. Uh, this notation is pronounced uh, in permute R. That's the way we say that out loud. Um, and a couple of notes here. Uh, when R is equal to N, that's just the entire set. All right, well, how many ways are there to order the entire set? There's N factorial ways. And if you do the algebra, that's what you get back. So this formula also recovers the full permutation example that we did. Uh, and if R is greater than N, think about it. There's no R element permutations if R is greater than N because you can't permute more elements than you have. Uh, so we define P of NR to be zero in the case that R is greater than N. Uh, we're not gonna see that come up, but it's worth mentioning. All right, so let's think about that formula for a second. 
When we choose the R elements of omega to order, we do so by shuffling all the elements of omega. That's one way to do it, right? If I want to choose R elements of my set, I can shuffle all n of them, and there's going to be n factorial ways to do this. And let's say that I'm only going to take my first R elements, right? This is one, two, dot, 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 R. Okay, so I do a cutoff here at my rth element. And then I've got all this stuff here in the back that I don't take. I don't take this stuff. I don't care about it, right? This isn't part of my sample. All right, well, the number of ways to order that stuff that I don't care about is exactly n minus r factorial. So since I don't care about the way that stuff was ordered, the total number of R permutations is N factorial over N minus R factorial. All right, let's do a couple of examples. In programming, a list or an array, which many of you already know this, is an implementation of a finite sequence. What I mean is I have a finite ordered object. How many four element lists with no repetitions can be made? from a set of six objects. I've got six objects in my set, so that means that n is six. And I've got r elements in my list, so that means r is going to be four. This is the number of elements I want, this is the number of elements I can choose from. All right, well, let's just do the formula, right? Because that's going to be six permute four, which is six factorial divided by, now don't get confused, a lot of people will write four factorial here down at the bottom but it's going to be six minus four factorial. Remember, we divide by the number of ways to order the stuff that we don't care about. Six factorial ways to arrange this entire list. Two factorial ways to arrange these guys I don't care about. I'm not taking those, so I don't care what order they're in. I only care what order the first four objects are in. Um, so let's use the recursive property of the factorial here. Notice that we can write 6 factorial as 6 times 5 factorial. We can also write it as 6 times 4 factorial, times 5, oops. We can write it as 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. I'm just repeating that recursive definition over and over and over again. So I can write it like that, and the reason I would write it like that is because now I can cancel out the two factorial on the bottom. I know what you're thinking, hey Weathers, two factorial is just two, so why don't you just multiply six factorial out? But it's not always two, is it? So those cancel, and we're left with six times five times four times three. Uh, six times five is 30. 4 times 3 is 12, and 30 times 12 is 360. So that's how many of those lists there would be. Here's another example. How many ways can the top three participants be chosen from a competition with eight entrants? Uh, so same idea. I've got eight competitors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I don't care about these five. They, they all lost, right? So there's five factorial ways to order those. There's eight factorial ways to order everybody. So my answer is eight permute five, not eight permute three. Oh, no, actually, hold on. Oops. It is eight permute three, but I divide by five factorial. And that gives me 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial over 5 factorial. So cancel those. And we get 8 times 7 times 6, which is, oh, it's the easiest way to do this. Uh, 7 times 6 is 42, right? Times 8 is 336, I think. I don't have a calculator in front of me, so we're going to put a question mark next to that. You can check that on your own. I think it's 336, though. Um, I want to point something out here, though. 
there's a fundamental counting principle way we could have solved this problem as well, and it would get you the same answer as eight times seven times six. Uh, you have to pick a first place winner. You have eight ways to do that. You have to pick a second place winner. You have seven ways to do that because the same person can't win both first and second. And then you have six ways to choose your third place winner. So that's another way to think about the fact that this answer is eight times seven times six, which may well be 336.